A deadly crash exposes questions about life and death decisions by one of Colorado's most respected hospitals. Where are they taking him? Oh. Are you University? Tonight, Denver 7 Investigates uncovers new video and digs into candid accusations from paramedics about a potentially dangerous culture inside the hospital. Paramedics forced to bypass qualified hospitals and return critically injured patients to Denver Health. Is that a problem from what you've seen? Why would we not get them to a trauma center that's closer? We need to talk about it, ask the hard questions, and get to the answers to fix this. Now the president of Denver City Council is calling for action. Here's chief investigative reporter Tony Kowaleski with the story tonight. It's 436 in the morning, September 28th of last year. 314, I'll be following the first bus to Denver Health. The man inside the ambulance in front of this police car survived a serious car crash. His passenger died. The ambulance is driving code 10, lights and sirens, the highest priority call on the ramp westbound towards I-70. It's another example of a controversial culture living inside Denver Health's paramedics division. We just rolled up on an accident. Uh, we're not involved, but it was nice. And the questions center on decisions made here in the minutes before the ambulance started driving westbound to Denver Health. Where are they taking him? Uh, are you guys going to university? That brief exchange exposes the heart of this issue. They're going to Denver Health. That's where they're going. Why transport a seriously injured patient to Denver Health more than 14 miles away, a drive that took more than 17 minutes when another qualified level one hospital was only four miles away? They're going to Denver Health. That's where they're going. University is closer. Why? Why would we be doing that? She's the president of Denver City Council, Stacy Gilmore, questioning why paramedics chose not to take that seriously injured patient to UC Health, the closest level one trauma center. What did you take from the tone and the questions that were asked? They were questioning the objective. They, they didn't agree with it. It seemed odd that they were gonna go to a different facility when there was one so close. Does Denver Health need to explain this decision? I think they should. Earlier this year, Denver 7 investigates raised concerns about several other questionable transport decisions by Denver Health paramedics. Two parties walked in with with everybody. This call for a gunshot wound in Green Valley Ranch, along with more than a dozen other questionable decisions raised by medical professionals and emails our digging discovered. Why would a paramedic drive 10 or more miles further and avoid a closer level one trauma center? Because if I transport the patient to Denver Health, no matter what the patient outcome is, I won't get second guessed by my medical direction. If I transport them to another facility, it will be scrutinized and reviewed a lot closer. Our reporting also included rare behind the curtain insights from more than a half dozen current and former Denver Health paramedics. Are you surprised by what we found? Nope, not at all. All level one trauma goes to Denver Health. You will go by other level one trauma centers to go to Denver Health. If not, you were questioned as to why you did not take that patient to Denver Health. Reaction to what we reported? Very concerning. I would like to get to the bottom of it. There's two kinds of paramedics who work at Denver Health. <laughs> paramedics who take all code 10 trauma to Denver Health and ones who used to work there. What are you saying? I'm saying if you were the paramedic who continually took trauma somewhere else, they would find a reason for you not to continue your employment at Denver Health. What did you hear from those paramedics? That they were conflicted. They wanted to do what they felt was right, what was in the best interest of the patient that they were responsible for, and they felt like they couldn't do that. The president of Denver City Council represents the city's 11th district located in northeast Denver. She says it's a diverse district with a strong Latino and black population. It's the district where we discovered the concerning decisions on that gunshot wound and the critical car crash. What if senior leadership at Denver Health ultimately say we're not going to change anything? Is that acceptable? No, no. 
because you are, by taking that stance, quite possibly putting black and brown people at a greater risk than the rest of the population. We wanted to raise those points to Denver Health CEO Robin Wittenstein. We wanted to ask her if she plans to make changes to the culture that has produced serious questions from paramedics, medical professionals, and now the president of Denver City Council. Our multiple requests were declined. If Denver Health CEO says we're not going to answer questions in front of this camera, is that acceptable? No, because it's Denver taxpayers who are putting money into these facilities. They deserve to have answers to understand if, God forbid, something life-changing happened to a loved one, that they weren't going to go on a joy ride through the city, that they were going to take the quickest route to that emergency room, get stabilized, and determine the next steps. Denver Health elected to only issue this written statement. It acknowledges that UC Health was geographically closer on this call, but said that choice would have required the ambulance to double back on the next exit. The statement also said the patient was injured, but not critical. We find that fact confusing, confusing because of this radio call. Can we tend to fight with one? That was the paramedic saying they were driving Code 10 back to Denver Health. Lights, sirens, and high speeds. It means the patient is in need of urgent medical care. So if the patient was not critical, we ask why the urgent return to Denver Health? We will continue digging deeper on this one. I'm Chief Investigative Reporter Tony Kovaleski.